Hey every birdie, Go7, King of the Penguins here with a definitive Advanced War CO tier list. I will be ranking all of the COs by how hyped they are to pick in a match. It is important to note that when a CO is picked outside of their Global League tier, their hype tier would effectively go up by one rank for every tier they are being outclassed by. For example, Grim, indisputably top of S tier for hype. Now he's a tier 4 CO, so if you pick him into a higher tier, he will break this list and go on to unknown territory like S plus or S plus plus plus. I don't think there's any explanation needed for Grim. A basic rule of thumb is that the weaker and less used a CO is, the higher they rank in hypeness. It's not always true, such as Jugger here, who I would put in D tier for poor design, and then Flack. Where, there he is. I would put Flack in A tier. Why is there such a discrepancy between these two? Simple. Jugger, too extreme. He's just the go to pick for luck shenanigans. Flack, more reasonable, more restrained. You're not trying to just min max if you pick Flack. Min maxing, not hype. Much like how, how Max is not hype. I would put Max behind Jugger in D tier. He's too good. He's got a simple package that lets him wipe armies. The power can have some flashy turns, but it can get dull real fast. So he gets to live in D tier. And you know what? He's going to be joined by Eagle, who has a very similar kind of situation. If you've seen him wipe an army once, you've seen him do it a million times. He loves to stall. He's got buffed air units, but doesn't even need them. His downside is a joke, and he has the most broken super in the game. He also really sucks to play against. So he's going to join Max here in D tier. Uh, oh, before I forget, Kindle, least hype CO, bottom of F tier. She outclasses everyone in her league and is a pain to play against. Broken powers and passives. She is a joke for hype. Definitely pick her if you want to win, though. Along similar lines, Von Bolt, F tier. He is the safe pick for tier 1. You rarely see his power, and it's easy to magnet away anyway. So he's just a strong passive and nothing else. Very good for winning games, but actual trash for hype. As a foil to him, we've got Sasha, who is the underdog of tier 1, and her passive opens up unique lines of play with the extra income you get. She has a power that can actually contest and even dominate some of these the least hype CO's powers, such as Eagle and Bumbolt. Her ditto is a little awkward though, so I'm just gonna put her at the end of S tier. Now, we haven't talked that much about the tier four CO's, so let's address Adder. He is a solid C tier. He has no day to day, which is hype in itself because he gets so much out of so little. But he's really prevalent, and anyone that, that is that overused can't be hyped. Similarly, Jake, F tier. He is everywhere. He's also got a lot going for him in terms of strength with stat boosts and indirect range and movement boosts. Like, he's, he's kind of everywhere there. Now, Cole is kind of like a combination of Adder and Jake, but he's way more hyped than either of them. He's scorned by the community, but clutches out wins anyway and can actually use roads for some combat benefit. He's A tier, right here behind Flak. And you know, at the top of A tier, we've definitely got Lash. She's often outclassed by Kindle, so her usage is fairly low. She's got a forbidden technique in her normal power, and her HQ cap can uh, uh, and she can HQ cap upset with her super. So she brings a lot of hype to the table. She is the only CO to interact with terrain stars, so she's got her own unique niche, which is great for hype. She's a you know a little too strong for S tier, I'd say. She's not like a huge underdog in her tier, just really overshadowed by Kindle. And you know to finish out A, we have. Sammy. 
cataclysm right between Flak and Cole here. She is by far the most hype of any of the tier 2 COs. She gets so much done even while having weaker direct vehicles and can bring Sammy only openings due to having faster transports. However, she can never reach S tier because she also introduces a lot of cheese in the form of HQ rushes to the game. So while that is around, she will be capped at A tier, even when being picked into a tier one or zero game. I haven't actually put anything in B tier yet. I would say that Rachel is definitely the top of B tier. She's underused and has an underappreciated passive of increased repairs. Her power and super complement each other really well while leaving room for counterplay. And along those same lines, she forces your opponent to ditch the death ball meta. And anything that breaks the meta is hype. I would rank her higher, but she also brings the move planner into the game as a requirement, and that is intrinsically unhyped. Much like how Olaf is, who I would place in F tier here, just ahead of Kindle. Olaf has so much going against him. He's overused, mass damage, weather, and he has no downsides. The only way you get hypeness out of Olaf is if you play him against Hawk. And I would say that Hawk is C tier just out of pure coolness. He does also have a little bit of healing with his power, and he's tier 1 while not being Von Bolt. Now, similar to the healing of Hawk and the simpleness of Adder, I would say that Andy is C tier. He, he gets a lot out of a little with his design and changes how the game is played, but he's also a very common pick. I do like his matchups with other COs in his tier, though, like Rachel and Drake. And Drake, I'm going to put here in B tier. He is the highest ranking mass damage CO because he has significant downsides with weaker air units, which are some of the best units in the game. He also has faster boats, which means he has more transportation plays. Now, he would be less hype, but he can still do so much with 20% weaker copters that I have to put him in B tier. His weather is also the least annoying since the vision loss also affects him. Now, I would put him all the way up in S tier if the if the rain introduced fog in the standard for a turn. I'd do that for sure. All right, let's talk with some about some of these tier zero COs. They, they're definitely not hype. They're way too strong. I see way too much play when available. I guess Grit. I would say Grit's more hype than Hawk. He has significant downsides and can have some very cool plays that no one else really does, such as armies of transport copters for blockers and vision. He also, But he does also introduce some of the slowest and most punishing play in the game, so I'm not going to let him go above C tier. And I'm going to have him join actually with Hachi. Now, the only way and only reason that Hachi is, tier, or is in C tier here is because he's got some of the best uses for pipe runners and missiles, so he gets to steal some of those units' hypeness. But he is one of them, if not the most broken CO in the game, so definitely never above C tier. Should probably put him in D tier, but getting to use those units is too cool. Now, Kanbai is just big units that just you know won't die, so that's uh, that's F tier. Increased cost means there's less variety, and he's mostly just a broken passive. <laughs> okay, he does also have a broken super, so even more reason to be an F tier. At least he's you know more hype than Olaf. Now, Sensei is hype the first time you play him, and then you realize he's just on massive units, so D tier. His broad downsides combined with his specific upsides really force a play style, and it's kind of boring. It is, it is also really good though. If you want to win with a million infantry and copters, just to find out that you're actually going to lose because you spawned on the wrong side of the map, then you should pick Sensei. Now, Javier is a C pick. I put him up upgrade here. He discourages your opponent from stalling with indirects, which is great, but his passive is pretty much Von Bolt levels of boring. He also over centralizes the game on con powers. The more comm towers there are in the game, the lower his hype rank is. If there are no comm towers, though, then he would be A rank, just from the sheer audacity to pick him into such a map. The one... Er, no. 
this one is going to upset a lot of people. But Jess is D tier. Her game plan is to leverage having a reliable 20% attack boost with vehicles to unlock two hit combo kills that other COs in her tier can't. It's boring. <laughs> She's got weaker infantry, which means she relies even more on tanks. A unit that the meta has spilling out of its ears. And her powers are boring. No one cares about ammo and fuel refills. She's just a slightly weaker max that's two tiers lower. However, she does have some more varied play because she actually gets to use indirects. So I'll put her at the top of D tier. Now, Nell is hype until you play her and find out that having huge positive luck boosts just sets you up to be let down even more. Playing her will ruin your love of the game. D tier. At the end of D tier. For sure. Colin is an incredibly broken CO that wants to stall the game out till he has infinite money and then kills you without even breaking a sweat with a ton of units that one shot everything you have. Super fun to fight. He is F tier. At least, well, there we go. At least, he brings some memeable situations. Now, my favorite CO to play is Sturm. He's got a lot going for him. Wide variety of usable units, unique uses for units, viable missiles, his own capture routes, and the list goes off. But what's holding him back? He breaks maps, and his mirror is anti-hype. Sturm vs. Sturm is probably the leading cause for day one draws, and draws are not hype. So I'm going to put him at the end of B tier. Last, but certainly not least, we have Sonya. She is a serious underdog in her tier, rarely picked. She has unique mechanics with mystery health, increased vision, seeing into hidden terrain, and her always first strike super. That's a lot to love, and that's why I'm going to put her in S tier. The only thing that's holding her back is the bad luck which feels awful to play with, but can also be kind of hype because you're fighting that uphill battle. Sonya is definitely always hype to see, unless she's allowed in Tier 4 and Fog, and then she becomes much less hype because she's just a dominant pick. I think that finishes my hype tier list. I hope that you find it useful when you're trying to figure out how you want to style on your opponents. Good luck, and have fun out there.